This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by our good buddies at Squarespace. Turn your great idea into a reality with Squarespace. They make it easier than ever to launch your passion project, whether you're showcasing your work or selling products of any kind. With beautiful templates and the ability to customize just about anything, you can easily make a beautiful website all by yourself. But if you do get stuck, they have award-winning 24-7 customer support to help. Head to squarespace.com slash grace for a free trial, and when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace, G-R-A-C-E, to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. Hi, Jack Ferry. Hi, Grace Helbig. Welcome to another episode of Not Too Deep. Thank you. This is a very exciting episode. Alex Clark will be with us very shortly. Yes. And he is an absolutely wonderful, wonderful human being. Uh, he's very multifaceted. Yeah, real renaissance man. Yeah, he's lived a thousand lives in his very young age as an adult. I agree. He's an animator. He's like a juggler. He's a... a Comedian, performer. Video game aficionado. Gamer. He basically has taken up every genre of YouTube video possible yeah. and is doing it very, very well. I saw that he recently ushered you into the uh, cultural fad that is Fortnite. Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I will say I saw Red and I... Yeah, you I, really got into the Battle Royale. Yeah. Yeah, it took me over. <laughs> um, I had some... I guess I had some demons I had to work out. It's a whole new side of you. I now believe that you would do quite well in the Hunger Games. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I have more confidence in myself in that too. But you were saying that you have recently become a gamer. I, I have you, been. you're dabbling in games. Yeah. What kind? Uh, so I got a PlayStation because I wanted to play around with the VR stuff. Okay. Which, by the way... The PlayStation VR, not a sponsor. It's so cool. I didn't know that PlayStation had VR. I it's mean, it makes sense. Yeah, it's awesome. And the reason I got it was because I wanted I want to create VR content. Yeah. Um, and I was like, I should buy the thing that's like most people have. Yeah. Um, you know, so I figured t dabble test exactly. God so, bless you, Melissa. Yeah. <laughs> so I uh, so I got it, and um, you know, I like first thing I, I started watching a bunch of stuff because there's mm -hmm. all these channels you can watch stuff. But then I was like, I'm gonna try some of these games. And yeah. there's one game called Eagle Flight. What is it? It's so fun. You are an eagle flying through the city of Paris. Beautiful. Okay. It's so relaxing. Why specifically Paris? I, it's just a very artistic game. It's very cool. It's like the idea is that like it's somewhere in the distant future. Um, humanity has left the city for unknown reasons. We don't understand why. Okay. So and it's empty. It's not empty. It's filled with animals. It's just animals. Oh. Like other birds and and like... So it's a perfect society. <laughs> it's beautiful. And like all of like there's like zebras and everything because like the, the, all the animals got out of the zoo basically. Sure. And um, you basically fly around as an eagle just by tilting your head. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun. It's so relaxing. What is the... So this experience is an experience, not really a game. No, like it's a game. Like there's levels where you like can race, um, what other you, birds what's the, and what's the challenge? Like, what's the goal? Um, it's basically, you're just trying to like set up your, your home, like okay. very early on in the story. Wow. You kind of like, you meet another Eagle who becomes like your significant other. So it's like a, a VR rom-com in a way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's a really fun game. Um, the, whoever made it is fantastic. It's super, super cool. It's like that great combination of like exciting, but also relaxing. And I think a a lot of games. I'm also a big fan of the Call of Duty games. Like I just finished Call of Duty World War II. Oh, okay. Um, Which sounds like the opposite end of the spectrum it's from totally, this relaxing Eagle VR experience. It's totally the opposite. But yeah. sometimes, you know, sometimes I just kind of want to like float around Paris and then other times <laughs> I want to shoot Nazis. And yeah, you it's, know, uh, there's it, different ways to relax, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, and I'm I'm a huge fan of the, of the Call of Duty games. And so, um, yeah. And but so, also VR sounds it's really cool. And also, uh, it's the future, everyone's saying. Yeah. And so it seems like a really interesting platform to create content that's creative, like I experiences agree. like that. There's a there's a game in particular on VR um, that comes with like on one of those like multi-game discs. Mm -hmm. It's called, I think it's called The London Heist. And it is so cool. Uh, definitely check it out if you guys get a chance to because it's like you're basically... In Ocean's 8? Kind of, but uh -huh. it's but it's all British, so it's oh. like you're like in like the dark underbelly of. Uh, it sounds like you just want to go to Europe. Like I feel like you should <laughs> probably just get a flight. <laughs> yeah, don't need to because now I've got VR. It's in your living so, room. Yeah. So yeah. how was playing Fortnite? 
It was fun and complicated. Game. I've never been a gamer. Yeah. Um. You didn't have a Nintendo growing up. We did. My brothers did. Okay. I played like Clay Fighter. Tim and I used to play Sega, and we played Sonic mm-hmm. the Hedgehog. Sure. A lot, and then we um. No I, Mario Mario Kart race. No, like, I played that a couple times with Hannah, and it gets very competitive. I'm sure. Um, and <laughs> then we used to play Pokemon Stadium, but just the side games, which are like just really there's no stakes. Sure. There's no real like consequence or re- reward for them at right. all. Um, so those kind of games, I think, are and then yeah, I just never my my brothers used to play Diablo, which would like crash our family's computer because it was like <laughs> a bootleg version of it constantly. Right, right. And so I just remember always having like pop up ads on our family's computer because my older brother was downloading, downloading uh, malware. <laughs> yeah, basically, <laughs> like yeah, we've been under surveillance by the FBI for since all of my childhood. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't gotten into. It. I know, like, I feel like. I'm more of a puzzle game. I played, I got really into Tetris, big Tetris phase when I was in like uh, high school because it was, there's something to me that's the calming kind of like mindless sort of. Sure. And I've heard before, and this is just a vague thing that I've heard that probably should be looked up for relevance, um, that women are like more predisposed to liking puzzle games or like word games. Sure. Whereas men are predisposed to like mission games, like gather hunt sort of right. scenarios. I'm curious to see if that's true because I do also like puzzle games. There's a puzzle game that I'm playing right now in PlayStation VR mm-hmm. called Moss oh. where um, you are kind of like this um, higher power being that can help this little mouse sort of work its way through an adventure and every room you enter is basically a giant puzzle and you have to figure out like, oh, oh cool. okay, I need to move this thing. And that's then, like Legends of the Hidden Temple. Kind of, yeah. yeah. It's pretty cool. Um, and that's fun because it's like, it's another one of those games because it's a puzzle game. It's kind of relaxing because yeah. you're not really like on but a you're timer. you're still actively involved in it. Like yeah. your brain is still functioning. And it's and it's done in a really clever way. Like it's got this very like fairy tale storybook sort of aesthetic to it. Oh, that's cool. Um, and because it's in VR, it's like all the little set pieces are like, it's like having a dollhouse in front of you. Mm-hmm. And then you're playing with the dollhouse um, throughout the game. It's super interesting. That's interesting. Ooh, it's really cool. Here's one thing I just remembered yeah. that is sort of a very subconscious goal of mine i would love to be a voice in a game oh i'm certain we can make that I happen would anyone out there that's <laughs> developing a game uh that needs a Grand voice Theft auto six. Oh my god <laughs> just me being like oh my god just screaming <laughs> what, i'm sure we can make that happen be like one of the people on like the sidewalk being like hey watch it buddy <laughs> yeah get away from me <laughs> yeah i would love 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 that i just think it'd be so funny you know Jarrett did that Really? Jarrett, I think, has... He's, like, one of, like, the the sort of tertiary characters. And I think L.A. Noir, which is another, <gasps> like, rock star game made by the same guys who did... Oh, cool. And I think he might be... Yeah, he's in, like, a... I think he's in, like, a couple of those. That, it seems like the most <laughs> ridiculous VO recording experience mm-hmm. that you just have to say basic catchphrases. Mm-hmm. And they're getting so elaborate. Like, yeah. the, um, the Call of Duty World War II game... Um, oh, shoot. What's the guy um, who's married to Fergie? Uh, Do Hamel? Yes, Josh Dumel. He yeah. is like a huge part of this game. Like really? he plays like the antagonistic like uh, sergeant of your platoon who has like a drinking problem. Okay, and there's so much story, and like he's in the game. Like they like did like as some sort himself? of y- no, not as Josh oh, Dumel. Like, <laughs> but I mean, like they did like motion capture, I guess. Oh, that's cool. So, um, so it's weird, like. You know, you're like hunkered down in a foxhole, like trying to shoot Nazis, and like Josh Dumel is yelling at you. And then, yeah, and then Fergalicious just starts playing right. quietly in the background. It's so which, strange. Oh my god, we're gonna get into it because we we kind of hinted at Alex Clark. He's a was a juggler. He's like uh, studied at Cirque du Soleil. Yeah. One of his early juggling um, groups was called Juggalicious. <laughs> And we brought this up to him on This Might Get, and he was like, I forgot about that. And so we didn't have enough time to get into it on that show. But well, we're we going to get a podcast now. We're going to get into it. So, okay, we'll be right back with Alex Clark and Juggalicious. No, 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 not too deep. With Clay Seidbeck. This episode of Not Too Deep is brought to you by my buddies over at Third Love. They use thousands of real women's measurements and they design its bras with breast size and shape in mind so they fit impeccably and feel even better. And now, since adding 24 new sizes, Third Love offers the most options of any brand. A total of 70 
sizes and you can find your fit in 60 seconds online order and try on at home with third love's fit finder quiz and it's actually fun and takes less than a minute so there's no more of those awkward in-person fitting room experiences this is hands down one of the most comfortable bras that you'll ever own from premium ultra soft smoothing fabrics to expert design features like straps that don't slip the details make the difference and the labels are tagless so they're not itchy and because third love guarantees a perfect fit returns and exchanges are free and easy and they have sent me a couple of their bras you guys know i talk about wearing sports bras all the time i'm a leisure over um um, trying to impress anyone, I guess, kind of girl. But these are just as comfortable, if not more so, than my go-to scummy sports bras. So, Third Love knows that there's a perfect bra for everyone. So, right now, they're offering you beautiful listeners 15% off your first order. Go to thirdlove.com slash grace now to find your perfect fitting bra and get 15%, 15% off your first purchase. That's thirdlove.com slash grace for 15% off today. No, no, not too deep. Guess what, Jack Ferry? I can't guess, Grace. Tell me. Uh, this episode of Not Too Deep is sponsored by Squarespace. Well, uh, that is such a surprise. I did not see that one coming. I know, but I, <laughs> I, I've had a feeling that you really wanted to turn your dream into a reality. And you know who you can do it with? Squarespace. That's interesting because mm-hmm. I've heard that they make it easier than ever to launch your passion project. Oh, wow. Passion projects like, you know, starting a new business or showcasing your work or publishing content or selling products or more. That's interesting because um, I'm actually in the market right now for something with beautiful templates Mm -hmm. created by world-class designers and the ability to customize just about everything with a few clicks. You can easily make a beautiful website yourself. Guys, I have done it. I use Squarespace. It's a Cinderella story. Rags to riches. No website to website. The Jack Ferry story. That's Thank you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's and beautiful. I mean, to add on, they have powerful e-commerce functionality and it lets you sell anything online and they have analytics that help you grow your site in real time. And everything's optimized for mobile right out of the box. Which you don't think about often when you're building a website. That's right. You don't have to worry about like technical stuff like patching and upgrading. Don't even know what that is. Don't need to worry about it. Um, but they do have 24-7 award-winning customer support in case you do get stuck on some technical detail. Few. Yeah. And they empower millions of people from designers to lawyers to artists to gamers to restaurants and gyms and Jack Berries. They help <laughs> people turn great ideas into something real. So head on over to squarespace.com slash grace for your free trial. And when you're ready to launch, use the offer code grace to save 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. That's squarespace.com slash grace, offer code grace, Jerry, C-E. You're obviously very cool, and I don't want to toot your own <laughs> horn, but um, <laughs> but I can No, imagine. I understand what you mean, because... Well, you're socially very comfortable, like you seem, or seemingly comfortable, yeah. you're just very, you know, you are yourself, unapologetically, and... I imagine that there's a stigma with animators that there's like a social awkwardness that might oh, happen. Oh, yeah, 100%. Right. People meet me all the time like, but you talk. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, You're what? comfortable to be around. Yeah. I think it's because uh, I was never, I wasn't like that. And uh, I, my first passion was street performing, which oh, is. Oh, yeah. We're going to get into Juggalicious. Yeah. Trust oh, no. me. Oh, trust <laughs> I me. I can't escape this life. No, like, you named <laughs> yourself this, Juggalicious. Guess. Yeah. <laughs> The website still exists. If you can figure out our spelling, it's a little treat for you. You can uh, see me, high school Alex in his Hawaiian shirt. Has being Fergie ever come for you yet? I met Fergie once outside uh, Groundlings, oh, which is an improv theater in right. LA. And I didn't know it was her. Okay. And I didn't know I was talking to Josh Dumal. Or is that we're just talking it? about we Josh Dumal. We were talking really? about video yeah. games in the beginning of this podcast because we recorded like a little segment before the yeah, guest yeah. comes on. Uh, yeah, we were talking about what game is he in? He's a- in Call of Duty World War II. Oh, this he's is like, perfect. He's like yeah. really in it. He's this like a main Wait, character. Wait, so how is he at the ground? Wait, okay. So they Keep were going. there and he kept looking at me and I was like, does this guy think he knows me or something? <laughs> like, did we go to high school or something? <laughs> Josh uh, like Demel. Yeah, yeah. He was like looking at me like he knew <sighs> and he was like, oh, I guess I'm famous or something. And then we walked in and uh, whoever I was with was like, yeah, that was Josh Jumel and Fergie. And I was like, oh, OK. Yeah. He, he <laughs> wow. has a crush on me. He, he is a me. huge Better juggling. Tell Fergie. He is a huge juggling fan. <laughs> or yeah, he knew he was looking at you with daggers yeah. in his eyes because he knew that you took his girl's uh, yeah. famous song and turned it into a <laughs> juggling <laughs> experience. Um, no, so you were saying you're just a VidCon and you did something that I think is 
the smartest way to handle VidCon. You emailed a bunch of other animators. Yeah. And you guys all met up and had lunch. Yeah. How was that? It was the best thing I ever did because instead of like wasting money on hotel and being right. there and food, all stuff, I got to do something really nice and like bring everyone out to lunch. And then, you know, instead of everyone have to run off and find each other and run yeah. around and be like, why are you answering my texts? We just like got it over. I don't like people. And so I was like, I get it. A group. I don't like, I like one person. But that's also. There's five people in here. That's good for me. Yeah. We'll discuss <laughs> afterwards which one of us you like the most. <laughs> the um, But that also feels very nice for the community that you said has exploded this yeah, year. Yeah, it's crazy. What's the, is there a, um something you can attribute it to? Or is it one of those bizarre, just internet unmeasurable phenomenons that you're like, we're just, it's there's happening. a, there's a couple people that kind of blew up, but I think what really did it is that all these people are latching on to that community and like casting mm -hmm. out a bigger fishing net. So mm. instead of like, when you're doing animation, you can only make like one video a month when you're by yourself. Yeah. Cause what's Sometimes the timeline? A faster, yeah. yeah. It's nuts. And so now that there's like 30 or 40 people that all have a growing audience, like we kind of all cast the net to the same group of people. And so oh, cool. it's a lot easier for us to get an audience. That's fantastic. Be yeah, because of everyone working together. It, yeah, it also feels like the pure version that YouTube used to be for content yeah, creators. Yeah, it really feels you like that. genuinely support each other it's and are It's 100% excited. like that. That's so weird. Yeah. That, oh, God, I got to learn animation so I can just get back to that community <laughs> feeling. Yeah, really. So our future is jaded is what you're telling me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fully, fully. I just either have to become Fergie or get into animation. One yeah. of the two. Um, but it's so had you guys all met each other before? Or was this the first time a lot of no, people I'd were? No, I'd only known like three or four of the people that were there, but it was like 30 or 40 people. It was insane. And who are your favorite animators online right now? Um, Not saying you have to like yeah, you know, yeah. choose your babies that you just all hung out with. but <laughs> <laughs> Actually, the, the first one I thought of wasn't even there. It's Bruce Stu. Okay. And he just does this very like, all right, let me tell you about this time. <laughs> I was in the third grade and my teacher was shooting people. <laughs> And uh, it's hilarious, guys. Really lighthearted comedy yeah. there. Yeah, that sounds really, really fun. I just feel like he's... Um, it's kind of like if South Park were a one-man cartoon, I think, his channel. Oh, yeah. that's fun. Yeah, it's and great. How, yeah, because how do you describe your animation? I have the hardest time doing that. I don't. I always try and explain that like TV has The Simpsons and Family Guy, mm -hmm. and I kind of want to make my family a thing uh, on the internet because that didn't exist. But I, I've never come up with like an explanation that's quick that people are like, oh, I get that. Succinct. Yeah. Understandable. Yeah, no. Yeah, I, I couldn't even think of the word to explain. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's how saying. I feel about my entire life constantly. Yeah. People are like, what do you do? I'm like, ah, oh, God, here we go. <laughs> um, it's a lot of things. I'm a professional attention seeker is what I do for a living. <laughs> um, okay, let's start from the beginning. Mm -hmm. You, one year East Coast, you're Boston, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're both Jersey. You're in Jersey, right? And you're mm -hmm. Jersey? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. But we met in New York um, and then came out here. But so then when did the juggling happen? <laughs> <laughs> this is your intervention, by we're the way. We're really getting into this. <laughs> when, I'm strap, trying to get strap, out of it. You're the one bringing no, it back. I'm bringing it back. <laughs> this isn't I an intervention. Like this is if like. If animation a... is popular this year, juggling is going to be huge <laughs> next year. So I'm just keeping it in your forefront. Did of you your... know Patrick Dempsey used to juggle? Really? Yeah, what? that's how I want people to know about Dr. my juggling. They want to be like, oh, why? Yeah, the, <laughs> that's that, a thing of his past. That was the so inspiration? I started juggling. No. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so He's Patrick so Dempsey in a TV drama. And mm -hmm. I was like, I, what's his secret? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's either acting school or juggling. Yeah. Okay. No, he was like one of the best jugglers. He like won awards and was like top 10. And then Patrick he, Dempsey? Yeah, 100%. That's crazy. Wow. I had no idea. Yeah, he wasn't just like doing it for fun. He yeah. was like serious. He was like a competitor. Yeah. So I got, uh, I got into juggling because I wanted to be a comedian. And okay. uh, which is the obvious. Get route. <laughs> well, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. <laughs> so I wanted to be a comedian, and I was a kid in the suburbs. There was no comedy clubs or anything, and mm -hmm. then I saw some street performers juggling, and they were hilarious. And I was like, oh, my God, they don't need a club. They kind of – and I always wanted to travel and stuff. And I was yeah. like, this is so cool. They get to go all over the world, and they don't have a boss, and they're really funny. So right. I, I guess – I learned to juggle as like the tool I needed to to be funny anywhere. Yeah, yeah. And because uh, it's so, like a universal language, juggling. <laughs> yeah, you don't have yeah. to speak English necessarily <laughs> to have people watch you and like understand how entertaining it is. It's not entertaining. 
I think it's, I can't <laughs> it? do it. I can't do it. Um, I think the... There's jugglers that are like really entertaining, but I think it's because they're performers. The juggling right. itself is not. I don't know. I'm a bad person to ask about juggling because I think it's so boring. It's you, such a weird thing to say. I did it for like ten years. You're your own community. Oh, I hate it. It's the worst. <laughs> but you studied with Cirque du Soleil. Uh, I had um, I had some friends that had got certified as coaches from Cirque du Soleil and okay. we worked together for a couple of years and they they taught me some stuff. That's very cool. Yeah. And that also seems an, like another subset of like community that prepared you for the YouTube world that you were about to enter. Yeah. That it's like, I mean, do, I mean, you just shit all over the juggling community <laughs> that you came up from. Uh, I mean, I love juggling to watch it, but I just, it's like such a dead end. I feel like it's so hard to to the best juggler in the world. Yeah. Absolute like Oprah of juggling. Who? Like exactly, right? Yeah. No one knows who he is and he left the business and started a concrete company. <laughs> pouring what? concrete wow. because he couldn't make it happen and he was like absolutely the best above juggler. and beyond everyone. Above and Michael beyond. Michael Phelps of juggling. Michael Phelps the of Michael juggling. Michael Jordan of yeah, juggling. Yeah, more balls than Michael Phelps. Wow. <laughs> And so the no, natural, being crazy. the best juggler in the world just just juggles one ball. One ball, yeah, <laughs> and it's a, yeah, just a basketball player. It's about the, the art. Uh, the yeah, I guess the natural retirement plan for a juggler is concrete company. Yeah, isn't that so crazy? That's really nut. Is he from the U.S.? Yeah, he lives in uh, Florida now and lays concrete. It's a okay. Wow. Well, he tried. Yeah, you guys send fan mail to Anthony Gatto and tell him <laughs> to get back in the business. He's amazing. <laughs> Amazing. We miss him. Yeah. Um, okay, so you went from juggling to... <laughs> to I like the way you stuttered. Like, you're feeling I my... juggled the letters <laughs> and the word juggling <laughs> with my mouth. Very creative. Um, the You went from that to, like, traditional comedy. Like, you studied at the Groundlings, right? Yeah. Okay, so what's that transition like? All right, so... Um, the juggling was always about the street performing. And so I went to college in Emerson in Boston. Mm -hmm. And there was like, partially because there's tons of street performers there in Faneuil Hall. Also, like every person in comedy went to Emerson. Yeah, isn't that weird? It's nuts. I'm like, this is its own little factory of entertainment yeah. comedy I think people. they recently made it a major because they're like, there's a lot really? of funny people. We got oh, wow. to make money off of this. Yeah, that whole and Jenny what Slate better crew. people to make money off of than comedians? There you go, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> up and coming comedians. Perfect. Yeah, the industry. So much that, money there. They got the cash. <laughs> yeah, they. They're, yeah, they're millionaires. Who do you know that went to, or what comedy people went to? Jenny Emerson? Slate, uh, Gabe Liedman, um, uh, Joe Mandy, all of them Emerson grads. I think <sighs> Nick Kroll might have been an Emerson grad. I'm not totally Was Joe sure. Mandy the one that had the Netflix special? Probably. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The like the award winning Netflix yeah, special. Yeah, yeah. Yes, they Joe had Mandy. that like really nice like award winning picture. Yes. And then you watched it, and you're like, "What? Well, but what about the picture?" Yeah, not not yeah. not commenting on the comedy at all. <laughs> Just it's, like the the production. It's a great yeah. it's a great special, but yes, that's it true, is a maybe. great yeah. special. But I'm just saying that, I haven't seen the full special, so I don't know. Well, he's I'm... like dressed up in a tux and he's holding the trophy, and then uh, it cuts to the footage, like the video, and it's him in a a, a hoodie. Oh, got it. Yeah, yeah. It's what a, a lie. It's a bit of a um. What do they call misdirect? That? I laughed a bunch watching it. I was just like, what? what, what? I want the tux. <laughs> <laughs> I came for the tux. Yeah, come out with another special wearing the tux. You lied to me. You lied to me. Yeah. Uh, but no, that whole crew, they all like met there. And that's how they started doing uh, Big Terrific. I didn't realize that. Yeah. Because I know I know that um, Max, Max is from uh, Boston as well. Yeah, they all went to Emerson. Oh, that's interesting. So I don't think Nick Kroll did. I think Nick Kroll was in New York with John Mulaney. <gasps> Georgetown. John okay. Mulaney. Yeah. Uh, what a guy. Georgetown. Got it. Thanks, Mel. Fact, we got Mel checked. We got Mel checked. Thank you, uh, Mel. No, so you went to Emerson and then you got interested in like comedy in that scene there. Yeah. And then did you go from Emerson to Los Angeles? Yeah. So I did uh, an internship program on Showbiz Show with David Spade, Fun. which was oh boy. Um, like How the was Daily that? Show, but a lot less successful. <laughs> um, but it was really fun. I remember the... The one time, uh, I, one of the times I went to a taping, I went because Quentin Tarantino was going to be there. And I was such a big fan. Like, I love Kill Bill and I love all his movies. And mm -hmm. I'm like, where is he? This is going to be great. And the, the place was packed. There was nowhere to sit. I was like standing on the side. 
And for 45 minutes, I'm like, where is he? Where is he? Where is he? <laughs> and then David Spay goes, and welcome Quentin Tarantino. And it was a dude standing right next to me. Oh. Like we were rubbing shoulders the whole time. I had no idea. Oh and I was like, God. no. <laughs> a missed opportunity. Come back. Yeah. I wanted to juggle for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, he's a, he's a huge fan of the podcast, so he'll hear and yeah, understand yeah. the misconnection. The uh, <laughs> you it, so you interned on that, yeah. Okay, I as someone that's also done like a billion internships in college on like Conan and things like that. How was that intern experience for you? It was really hard. Really? I, yeah, I wish I could do it again. Like, I think that's my only regret that I failed that internship. Like, How no one so? told me that, but I just decided. <laughs> After the first day, I was like, I'm not going to be good at this. Really? Because <laughs> I was so shy. I didn't talk to anybody. Same. Yeah. And I would just like sit in the corner and do the thing. They, and it was like, so not about that. Like, I should have been yeah. networking and talking to people. And it's overwhelming. Yeah. When you get in there and you're like, everyone has a game plan for this. Yeah. And I just came in to like use the fax machine when they asked <laughs> yeah, me to. Yeah. And I know that I'm not leaving a lasting memory to yeah, any of yeah. these people. And it's so hard because you're scared, but you really shouldn't be at all. You should be like... Just be outgoing is really all you have to do at an yeah, internship. Yeah, people are yeah. rooting for you when yeah. you're an intern as well. So you yeah. be like, I'm the new intern. Like, oh, cool. Tell me about yourself. Like, I find that people are really, versus like new hires, something like, yeah. they're like not threatened by interns. <laughs> you know? Yeah, there's a sensitivity and I think an understanding and hindsight that we are, you know, free labor yeah. for them essentially. Yeah, and sure. that the decent people are the ones that are rooting for you. Yeah, There's some terrible people that will just, use you yeah, in sure. such a way no, that's valid. that you're like, how? But they are fewer and farther between, I, th I, f I found. Yeah, I luckily like had a, I was super, super shy in my internship with Conan that I'm like- You interned on Conan? Yeah. What was that like? Same experience you had that like, I was just like head down trying to like do the work they asked me yeah. to do while everyone else was very much, um much more outgoing yeah. and much more like- not afraid seemingly yeah. to like talk to people and all the writers on that show were so fucking nice what they do which is kind of weird but helpful for everyone that works there they take a polaroid of all the interns and you like write your name on it and they have it up like in the communal space with the soda machine so all the writers and people that work in the office refer to you by name instead of just being like hey you Go do this run for us right now. That's yeah, cool. Yeah. Yes. That's so nice. So they do everything they can to make you feel like you're part of this like team that they have running already. But yeah, there's like, uh, I felt like there was like 15 interns. Like it's so nuts. That's so many. And you sit in like a boardroom all day. That was like you had the shared intern room. Mm. And so you just sit and wait for someone to come to the boardroom and ask for someone to do a task. And so you're just kind of hanging out with each other. And that was day. the internship. Wow. And that was basically the whole thing. So yeah. you're like an on-call task rabbiter. Yeah, before just, it existed. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But everyone was so nice. Um, but it was over. It was intimidating because I knew I wanted to do comedy. And so yeah. I was like... I, I want to I, I want to pick their brains, but I'm so shy that I yeah. could never do it. Whereas all these other interns, like going by the offices of the writers, being like, "Hey, Mike, blah, 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 blah. yeah, right. so nice." At least you had other interns. Mine was me alone, and you were by yourself, by myself, You're the only in intern? a cubicle. Uh huh. And uh, I'd spend half the day. I'd put together all the news stories or like stuff they could possibly write jokes about on a little one sheet. Got it. And then the other half of the day, I'd have to watch every single entertainment news show, Ooh. which I don't know if you guys so, watch those ever. They're horrible. Like E! News scenarios? Yeah, okay. but like f there's four different like versions Access of that. Access Hollywood. Oh, and Insider you, and things ugh. like that. Yeah, but you know how those shows are like extra. coming up after the commercial break? Yeah. And then they would do that six or seven times throughout the episode. Yeah. So I would have to go through that through five different shows that were all doing the same oh, story. God. That'll wear on yeah. you. Yeah. That's a bit grating. Yeah. And then I was like, juggling's not so bad. I gotta, yeah. <laughs> I gotta get back to this. You're just like therapeutically juggling yeah. furiously in your cubicle. Um, so how did that internship lead you to Los Angeles then? That internship was in Los Angeles. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you oh, you cool. moved from Emerson then to LA. To Emerson do this has a satellite school. Now they have this really huge, awesome building. Oh, okay. Um, so they have a school here. They have like a satellite school that like people go to for their last year to do internships and stuff. Oh, okay. It's like an exiting program almost. It's really cool. That's, That's awesome. That is yeah. awesome. That's a helpful no transition idea. out of college. Yeah. Which is also interesting because I feel like we're some of the few 
like YouTubers, quote unquote, that had a college experience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we go to things like VidCon and you see these like 16 year olds that have already been like, this is my retirement plan. Is this yeah. Like yeah. A YouTube thing? I got my GED and I'm done. Yeah. Does it feel <laughs> weird? To, I mean, I don't know if the animation community it's is. It's so weird. I'm actually coming out with a video about going to college today. Which really? I don't know when this is coming out, but. It, like next year. Yeah. yeah. So uh, three years ago, I came out with a video about going to college mm -hmm. today. And yep. uh, um, it was just like, I feel like I want to say stuff about this, but I don't know if it's How important it's or resonate. people care. Yeah. Yeah. But you, but you, it's out there. It's coming out in like an hour. That's... I can still give up on it. <laughs> <laughs> you still have time to cancel. <laughs> yeah. But before this is done. So what's some of the takeaways of that? Uh, the main thing was like, you, like, should you go to college? It's like, maybe like, it depends on yeah. if you can, like, I think you can learn stuff whether you go to college or not. Right. Yeah. Like, I, feel I the agree. Same way. It's not it, like for lawyer or doctor, like, yeah, you have to go to college, but to be a yeah, chef. I hope my doctor went to college. <laughs> yeah. <Jesus>. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but maybe he doesn't need to. Maybe he just really likes... If he's Doogie Hauser, he doesn't have <laughs> yeah, to. If you watch the right YouTube tutorials, I'm pretty sure you can mm -hmm. perform an appendectomy. I've watched Aesop Science. I know <laughs> enough. Yeah, that pretty much sums it up. Yeah, right? yeah but the, the main point was like, um, it's more important to be motivated about learning that thing that you're interested in, right? Oh, like, yeah. Sure. Like, if you want to be a chef and you spend your whole life, like hanging outside kitchens of restaurants and like peeking in the window and like, tell me everything, you know, like yeah. you'll get arrested a couple of times, but you'll also learn a lot. But you get an education. Yeah. Yeah. A free education. <laughs> Just pay your legal fees for all those yeah. uh, loitering things. Well, I think you get, uh, actually Emerson, my college got in, uh, people were mad at them recently because they're giving free education to inmates. And people are like, what about my crippling debt from student oh, loans? Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> Should have committed a felony first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. In hindsight, if you could go back. I know that is like... So that's just another way you can do it, yeah. That is totally true. And I'm on the same side of you as it's a personal, you know, dependent on what you actually want to pursue. Yeah. Because I remember having a debate ish with Hannah about because she was like you have to go to college you no. have to and I said the same she went to Berkeley and so I was like I don't think that's true I think you loved your college experience yeah. and so you find so much value in it that you think everyone will find the same innate value in it so I think there's there's a differential like a uh, experiential learning yeah. that can happen I think it's useful personally I think it's useful to have a degree um, well, but depends. I don't know that you need to like mortgage your future to pay for it though and i think that's the mistake people make. i think if you can go to a, a good school and get a degree that you're not like going to be crippled by debt yeah then it's worth it but if you're so going to be think crippled you need a degree by, to like work in the entertainment industry you don't know i don't think that but i do think that um it is useful so like yeah if if for whatever reason I want to go get a, just a normal job, yeah. that is a prerequisite. You must at least have a bachelor's in something to even apply for a lot of jobs. Yeah. So even if it's like, it's okay, you went to a community college, doesn't matter. It's just yeah, like yeah, yeah. one of those things like my dad used to say, it was like, you have to get your ticket punched. And like, that's just one of the things you just, you just want to do. So mm -hmm. I do think there's value there. I do agree with Hannah on that, on that point. I also think, I mean... In but you yeah. don't have to go to a school that costs fifty thousand dollars a year. No, I think there's a social value in it. Living, uh, you know, somewhere yeah. outside of like whatever place you were living before, and sure. learning to like socialize with other. Well, human also, beings. you connect with people that are like like minded and stuff, which is like a 100%. major reason to go. Sure, especially yeah. like people that live in small towns that are like super creative or artistic. Like, yeah, you, you grew up outside of Boston, like two hours away in this. So it wasn't like nothing, right? But uh, but it wasn't Boston. Yeah, and you didn't grow up in a city. Is there anything, my brother and his boyfriend live in Boston now, that you miss about it, living out here now? Miss about Boston. the East Coast. Um, my mom's food. Okay. Well, that's yeah. specific. All right. That's what kind of food it. does she make? Uh, she cooks. Uh, she's Italian. Lots of spaghetti. Uh, but also steaks and salad. You'll come for like, it'll be Tuesday. I'll be like, you guys want to come over? My mom's cooking. And it'll be like eight courses. This wow. Is, really? I'm, I'm, that's not an exaggeration. Like sometimes people blow, literally there'll be eight courses. <laughs> wow. You'll be stuffed and she'll be like, okay, we're going to get to the main course now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I mean, I'm down. I I will RSVP to that dinner whenever she is available. Is the eighth course um, brandy and cigars? No, it's uh, <laughs> like uh, prime rib and oh my lobster God. tails wow. and stuffed shrimp. And this is just like a regular Tuesday at my wow. mom's house. Uh, 
Um, I want to talk about Shaq Fu for a second. That <laughs> game is amazing. <laughs> um, because that's why I'm here. I think this is the whole reason you're here. So buckle in for another hour of <laughs> intense conversation. No, we're about starting Shaq a new Fu. podcast. Yeah, so yeah. All yeah. people about... who don't know uh, what is Shark uh, no, yeah, Shaq so Fu. Alex came on this weekend with yeah. Amy and I, and we brought him on to play Fortnite. Yeah, which he very honestly and wonderfully immediately told yeah. us that he's not good at that game. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he's well, obsessed. In comparison, I was good in compared to, oh, yeah, to you guys. We're there to make yeah. people, our guests, feel like much more capable humans <laughs> yeah, than yeah, us yeah. in every sense of I the I felt term. like I, I taught you something about the game. You taught me that I have a um, murder instinct in me <laughs> that I hadn't tapped into before, but... Um, and uh, yeah, it's changed my life dramatically. I've never seen someone so vigorously play that game. So that was I saw memory. red. I saw red. Um, <laughs> it brought up some some thoughts. But you were going nuts about Shaq Fu. Yeah. <laughs> so explain <laughs> to the listeners it what this game is. It is the best game on the planet. <laughs> you play Shaq and he know he's been endowed with the powers of Kung Fu. <laughs> <laughs> and this used to be like a game from back in the day that they were like rebooting. I don't know. I just got into it two weeks ago, but it's changed my life. <laughs> yeah, he was going nuts about it. It was like, wh- wh- did you make this game? And this is your I graduate? should have. It's amazing. I mean, it's genius. We've- He's kicking ass and drinking gasoline. <laughs> Wait, he drinks gasoline? Yes. I didn't know this part he of like it. turns into Iron Man every time he drinks gasoline and all this stuff comes on him and he just starts what? punching. I mean, has Shaq given his This is his the most o- underrated game of all oh, time. Has Shaq given Sha- his Shaq okay? is on the cover of the original release of the game. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's, I mean... So, yes. This is not a knockoff. This is not like Shaq spelt with a K. This is yeah. Yeah. legit with Shaq the Q. Q. With the with, Q. With the perfect no Q. No questions. Um, also, how do you... What is the thought process going into a pitch meeting with Shaq being like, I have a game idea for you. <laughs> you know how to do Kung Fu, you drink gasoline and you dominate. He's like, I'm mm-hmm. in. Yeah. And I wear my Dr. Scholl's. I feel like Shaq is someone that says yes to every single thing that's presented <laughs> yeah. to him his You're entire probably right. life. You're probably right. What was that movie? Kazam? Shazam? I feel like Shaq answers every question by thinking like, if I was in the sixth grade, how would I respond to this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If I wasn't Shaq but wanted to be Shaq, yeah, how yeah. How do I get there? Uh, okay, are there any other games that you're as obsessed with Shaq Fu about? That's impossible. It's Shaq yeah, Fu. Yeah, I know. That was... It is the pinnacle of video games. <laughs> yeah. It is. Well, so how are you playing it? Because I, I thought it was a game that came out on like... The it's on Switch, That's right? on Switch, yeah, yeah. Oh, so the, it's, it's a side-scroller, beat em up yeah. and you just lots of kicking and punching. And... But it's like, a, it's an old game. Like, it's a game from like well, it just, Sega uh, they just I think they remastered yeah. it or whatever. Oh, it's, it's like all new graphics, yeah. For the Switch, huh? It's... I may have to get a Switch now. Oh, you have yeah, to. Yeah, cool. I'll buy you one, dude. It... <laughs> <laughs> you like it with that much? With the caveat much. that you only play Shaq Fu. <laughs> yeah, it's only loaded with Shaq Fu. If you, have you created a game? No. If you, I was just in a game, though. Well, we were talking about this because I'm like, a secret, subtle, like, bucket list wish is that I want to be a VO in a game. Oh, that's so weird because I just made a video about, like, my bucket list and uh-huh. how I was just, like, was in a video game and I was freaking out that it actually happened. Okay, explain to us this. So, BBTV, which is an MCN, uh, they reached out to me and a bunch of other YouTubers and, like, we're going to put you in a video game. And then they they sent you, like, a little graphic of what your character looks <gasps> like. And you're like, I'm going to answer the same way Shaq does. Yes! <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if the game is any good. Let's do it. Um, What's your avatar, your character? It looks exactly like my animated character. It's amazing. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's yeah. so cool. Yeah. Is the game out? Yeah, or- it just came out last week. It's called Squad Rivals. It nice. charted in the top 10 on the Android store. Yeah, it's that's nice. awesome. Free to play. And so what was the, you recorded all the. I didn't get any lines in it. Oh, okay. Oh, you got it. But it was the totally my floor. character. Yeah. No, no, there was no talking in it. It was not oh, that sort of it. deal. But got it. that's the next level. That's yeah, chapter that's two. Awesome. Yeah. If you could create, and I don't know if you have anything in the works, like create your own game, what would it be? I'm working on this idea um, where it's me and Shaq. I was like, you can't say Shaq. (laughs) Shaq separate. What's your ideal video game? Uh, I really like uh, adventure games like... um, Like Zelda? Things like that. The new Zelda was awesome. And Uncharted, I love that. Kind of like the Indiana Jones vibe of like adventuring. Mm. And I think it would be something like that. Like missions and stuff. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Like Tomb Raider. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That would be so fun. What would your game be? 
Tetris. Straight up just Tetris. So what would no. the voiceover be? I'd be like, oh no. <laughs> I'm in trouble now. You fucked up again. Go back to your real job. <laughs> the blocks just keep you falling. Know? Yeah, it'd be a very, very honest Tetris commentary <laughs> about I know why you're really playing this game. Have that talk with your dad. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. would just I would just sing the cool Russian music. That would be Russian my voice. Music? Yeah, and Tetris is all like boo do 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 do. That's doo, Russian. Doo, doo. Oh yeah. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah. All right, learn something new every day. <laughs> um, okay, we're gonna take a break in a second, but um, what are you watching now? Like, how do you? Because I you... just watched Evil Genius. Have you guys seen no. this? No. Oh, I want to talk about it, but I don't want to ruin it. What oh, is it? It's on Netflix. It's okay. this documentary. Uh, this really happened. Uh -huh. What's about like the non-spoiler version? This dude. Uh, was a pizza delivery man. Uh -huh. He yeah. went to deliver a pizza. He got knocked out. And when he woke up, he had a bomb handcuffed to his neck. <gasps> I heard about this. Yeah. Holy and shit. And there was, there was nobody there. And he just had this like handwritten note that was like, do all these things or you're going to explode. What? So the documentary, yeah, you guys, I wish you could see Grace right now. No, She's hiding we, I, under we, her cue cards. Yeah, I'm holding it like a tiny parasail <laughs> over my whole body in case of a She's tiny so rain cloud scared. that comes. We were just talking, like I I just we watched Icarus and Wild Wild Country and have been mm -hmm. like obsessed with all those and I haven't heard of this. Now I'm like literally to do tonight. Well, yeah, the reason I don't want to tell you more is now. that the reason it's so good is I think there's seven episodes, but every episode you're like, this can't get crazier. And uh, then it does. It's called Evil Genius. Evil Genius on right. Netflix. Okay. okay, I'll have to check that out because we were just talking about the staircase that Jack was into. Yeah, I'm watching that right now. What's that? That's the one about the. Uh, it's a documentary series about the novelist who is accused of murdering his wife, mm -hmm. and he says she fell down the stairs. He like found her on the the bottom of the stairs. Um, oh, you're gonna love Evil Genius. And you just don't. Yeah, like, you don't no, know what. Like you don't know what happened because yeah. uh, it's told mostly from his perspective. But at the same time, like when you see like the crime scene photos, mm -hmm. there's oh. so. So much, much blood. blood. Yeah. They were like, well, no wonder they thought it was homicide when they yeah, saw it. Yeah, you're like, oh. something might have happened. This makes here. me want to tell you about Evil Genius, but <laughs> I don't want to ruin it. It's so good. Okay. Well, well you watch Staircase and I'll watch okay. Evil Genius. Okay, we're going to blue ball your Evil Genius for a second <laughs> and take a quick break. And when we get back with Alex Clark, we have your Twitter questions. We'll mm. be right back with more Not Too Deep. Yay. Not, 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 not. This week, we are sponsored by Kopari. What is that, you might ask? Well, listen to this. I never used to think about deodorant. I just swipe it on and go. And sometimes I swipe it over my whole body and go because uh, <laughs> hygiene is not something I think about too deeply. But let me tell you about this aluminum-free deodorant that has changed the game. Kopari's coconut deodorant is aluminum-free deodorant that doesn't suck. Guess what? It takes care of the smell without plugging up your sweat glands and messing with your body's natural patterns. It doesn't leave behind a sticky white residue, just the subtle scent of coconut milk. And how many times have you put on a shirt and then you go to a meeting or you go to get coffee with a friend and you look down and you got white like splotches everywhere I and hate they're that. They're so hard to get out, but this takes that out of the equation. More importantly, it works. It fights odor with plant-based actives such as sage oil and coconut oil, and it's free of silicone, sulfates, parabens, GMOs, and baking soda. It's gotten a lot of love from editors at Cosmo and People, and there are thousands of five-star reviews of Kopari's website from people who are now coconut converts. Real coconuts. Yeah, they're co co coconuts for coconuts. <laughs> Kopari offers a money back guarantee so you really have no reason not to try it but Harry because they can barely keep it in stock so say aloha to Kapari go to kapari.com slash grace g-r-a-c-e to make the safe switch today and see how you can save five dollars off your first purchase that's k-o-p-a-r-i dot com slash g-r-a-c-e kapari.com slash grace not, not too deep. Support for today's show comes from our friends at HelloFresh. Yay! HelloFresh is a meal kit delivery service that shops, plans, and delivers your favorite step-by-step -step recipes and pre-measured ingredients so you can just cook, eat, 
and enjoy. Mm-hmm. They have three plans to choose from, classic, veggie, and family, and each box is delivered right to your door in recyclable, insulated packaging and made up of fresh, responsibly obtained ingredients from carefully selected farms and high-rated, trusted sources. Plus, with simple recipes outlined on pictured, step-by-step instruction cards, even a dum-dum like me mm-hmm. can feel confident in his cooking. They make idiots feel like winners. <laughs> yes. There are even lots of one-pot recipes that require minimal clean up that's my favorite thing yeah so you can spend less time meal planning and grocery shopping each week and get that time back to do more of what you love which i can say i literally made a hello fresh meal last night creamy and how dill was chicken it? it was fantastic it was super easy to do and there's like they give you exactly what you need for it so you don't you're not left with a bunch of leftovers that you may right. or may not eat you're not left with a bunch of uh, excess ingredients that you may or may not use so that part you feel kind of like you don't have to worry about forgetting anything. <laughs> no, exactly. Exactly. Like I said, they make idiots feel confident. Yeah. And now, guess what? For $30 off your first week of HelloFresh, visit HelloFresh.com slash NTD30 and enter the code NTD30. That's HelloFresh.com slash NTD30. Offer code NTD30 for $30 off your first week of HelloFresh. I went to your website, which gives a full... Mm -hmm. better I think more um, specific personalized bio than Wikipedia does for someone yeah and you said that you used to watch Aladdin on repeat when you were younger which got you into animation but you would watch or listen to Robin Williams in that movie and that's what got you into comedy I loved Robin Williams yeah he was hilarious I bought that was the first CD Compact disc, Uh former way of listening to things thank you for clarifying because they don't Uh, know they really don't (laughs) though it's true. No, um, I literally got a DVD for something like months ago and was like, I have no actual way to watch yeah. this anymore. It's nuts. But OK, go ahead. Keep going. Um, and so that was the first CD I got and I brought it home and I was laughing the whole time. But the whole thing is like drug and sex jokes. That I didn't know why any of it was funny, but I was right. like, I love this. <laughs> Um, there was li- I remember for like six years, like every couple of weeks, I'd be like, oh, I get I get that joke now. Um, All these little epiphanies <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. in your brain. Yeah. Um, and That's that funny. is literally why I got into um, comedy. And then uh, Boulder, Colorado is like one of the only places in America you can street perform at. Okay. And um, Oh, like legally street perform. There's like a, like most places you'll get kicked out. Right. Um, even though it's technically unconstitutional. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> it, I could go on for that for hours. But uh, <laughs> the logistics of street performing. But... Um, Robin Williams and Mork and Mindy, it was based in Boulder, Colorado. Oh, and right. so when I kind of pieced that together, I was like, oh my God, this is like destiny. I got a street perform. Mm-hmm. And I went and I saw the first day there, I went and saw the Mork and Mindy house. And I was like, this is so cool. <laughs> um, that's so great. Yeah. So that's my Robin Williams story. Wow. Yeah. Uh, but I mean, an amazing comedian to get you into the world of comedy. Yeah. Just so like. I remember Sweet. listening to other comedians and being like, why aren't they like him? I don't Why I don't are they get... so mean? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay, we're going to get into some Twitter questions. Before we do, I'm going to ask you the two questions I ask every guest that's on the podcast. Okay. And the first is, who, alive or dead, would you most want to throw cold spaghetti at? You know, people talked me out of it, but I was going to bring <laughs> spaghetti and throw it at you today. But people talked me <laughs> oh, out of it. Thank God, because this is not my apartment. <laughs> and that would have been problematic. <laughs> yeah. Uh, that was like my big thing. I was like, I'm going to throw spaghetti at Grace. And then like I uh, talked to 10, 10 people, not one person. <laughs> Said I was just like kept calling people. I ran out of my friend list. It's like, well, just someone let me do this. Why won't one person enable me? Yeah, so Please. it didn't happen. Uh, so uh, next time, we'll maybe do a Josh Dumel. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Josh. Josh Dumel, yeah. good, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think that'd be great. I think Stop I'll... looking at me, Josh. Yeah. Why you vibing? Why you vibing me? We yeah, didn't go to I high gotta, school together. I gotta find out why he's giving you that side eye. <laughs> um, okay. And the other question I ask every single guest is to tell us your worst pants shitting story or close call, but you can only use three words or small phrases or like variations of that. Three words. So mine, just for example, is um, college jogging front lawn. Okay. I assume you have a story. Channel has video. Channel? Wait, oh, what? Whoa. Oh, okay. Oh. Sneaky, sneaky. And what's, uh, the, what's your channel? 
so we can all go uh, check it's, this it's out. It's just my name, Alex Clark. Okay. Yeah. We'll all go check it out. Perfect. To get clarification. What's the name of the video <laughs> on your channel? <laughs> it's, it's disguised. No. It's uh, pooing yourself is the name. <laughs> of the oh, video. so cryptic. Very cryptic. Wow, what a clickbait misdirect title. <laughs> yeah. oh, there you go. You know, I think there's still tons of comments on that video. They're like, this is clickbait. <laughs> My guys. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I see the video. It's good. Uh, I'll have to check it out. Um, okay, here are a bunch of Twitter questions, which are always okay. very uh, revealing. There's another time that I did it. It's <laughs> not. A- <laughs> oh, you just had an epiphany. I just, yeah, I, I think okay, I would have rather play. I like the challenge of the three words. Yeah, go for it. Uh, uh, castle first date. Oh. <laughs> So th- oh wow! Okay, wow! That one time that you did that has Prince more William. intrigue. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that has more intrigue than channel video. Yeah, <laughs> I'm like, where did you shit your pants at the Magic Castle? When did that happen? <laughs> um, okay, let's get into these Twitter questions. Uh, someone wants to know: Never watch Netflix again, or never go on Spotify again. Mm. Spotify. Never Spotify. Never Spotify. Delete that from your... Yeah, because Spotify doesn't have any unique content to it, right? Like you could use Google so. Music or Apple Music. They have unique content now. Really? Spotify, yeah. He's been a narc m- for Spotify this whole time. I don't know how much of it, but, yeah. I've, but I've heard they've got like some exclusive stuff on there, but not too much. Yeah, I think... I, I mean, I, I already... I would go Never Spotify again. Yeah. Yeah, that'd be my So what would too. you do? I would probably choose the same thing okay. <laughs> he's just loves to defend something but i mean there really is no way to see so many of those netflix exclusives if you don't have netflix unless yeah you're like, it's impossible boot- this is one giant netflix ad yeah. this whole podcast it really is well I no know. one's ever going hey did you hear that song on spotify you know <laughs> that's true that's true that's it had this chorus it was just <laughs> yeah spotify sometimes is really annoying actually because like yeah. they'll have a song and then it won't be available the next month and it's you just, just like, talked yourself completely out of enjoying spotify i mean I, <laughs> I i like the selection that they have but it can be pretty annoying and it's a very buggy app all right well anyway here's hoping they don't look into trying to sponsor <laughs> us at any point in the future uh, you can listen well, to this show on spotify Th- the there way. you go. So it's not the worst. In yeah. the world. It'll just be very glitchy and very buggy. <laughs> For you as an animator, um, my question: What's you? Do you have a preferred social media platform that, like, when you get your phone and open it up, is there something that you click on? The thing I go to, like yeah. uh, Instagram, for sure. Really? Yeah. Same. That makes sense. Visuals. What's yours? Uh, it's, it teeters between Twitter and Instagram. Twitter mostly just for news. But I then, had to block so many words on Twitter. I went on a rampage. Do you guys know you can mute words? Yeah. I didn't know that. You yeah. don't know that? It no. is the best. Anything you don't like, chocolate chips, boom. Never see it again. What? Yeah. yeah. Really? Yeah. Is there a way I can mute every anybody that has the letters M-A-G-A in their bio? Probably. <laughs> I bet they're developing that technology uh, if it doesn't I currently turn, exist. I gotta turn that on. There but you, you can. You can you can add M-A-G-A to your thing and of nothing muted. of that shows up. Wow. Ooh. So but, like when wow. the Bill Cosby thing was huge, I was like, I can't stand this anymore. So yeah. I just put Bill Cosby in and I never saw anything from it ever again. Wow. wow. That I had no idea, but makes total sense. I like yeah. it. But does it take it away from just the people you're following? Anything. You don't see anything. So anything. not even on Twitter moments, nothing. Nothing. Whoa. Okay. Well, I have a big to-do list tonight. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for the tip, actually. That's really helpful. Yeah. What what were what are like the first three words you think you would put on that I would mute? Yeah. Oh man. Um, I would probably mute. Hmm. What is bothersome to me? See, I'm always fascinated by people that are so bothered by things because I always want to understand, like, where does the anger and whatever come yeah. from? But I would probably do right now. Um, hmm. Oh, well, Trump. I feel like it's just me. I finally did that yesterday. Really? I had, yeah, I was like, I can't take this anymore. I feel like yeah. that I would just have to delete Twitter if that's really <laughs> something I don't, you don't want to see to, at you all. You don't have to do Trump. You can just do the hateful commenters who could comment things like cuck, snowflake, yeah, yeah, social yeah. justice warrior. Yeah, I think it would be a lot of that kind of yeah. stuff. I, what, how about you, Jack? What would you like do? Like those. I mean, honestly, like I didn't realize you could just... I would just love to eliminate all the MAGA idiots that like comment on stuff. Yeah. Like, well, you must hate how how great the economy is doing thanks to President Trump. You know, I'm just like, mute the word hate. Up. Like that's all you got to do. Think yeah, that's they, a good point. Did you delete? Yeah. Did you mute that? Not word? yet, but I'm gonna do it right now. Yeah. Perfect. Smart. Yeah. Okay. Someone wants to know if you could have your own country, what would you name it? I'm <sighs> like mute town. <laughs> <laughs> um, Alex Land. 
Oh, that's nice. Yeah. That also sounds like a game that you should develop. Not, yeah, yeah. Uh, not Alexandria? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I was uh, born in Alexandria. Really? Virginia, yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Is that how you got your name? Uh, no, it was my grandfather's name. Oh, okay. Good dude. Yeah, Good it was dude. just a coincidence. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have siblings? I have two younger sisters. Oh, what's it like for them? How young are they? They are... Uh, like 30 and 26-ish. So are you like, please don't look at the internet? Uh, well, so one of the main characters on my channel is my evil sister. Oh. And people are always like, does she hate it? Does she hate it? And it's yeah. like, she actually loves it. She's like, I have to be famous and I don't have to do anything. Like, that's <laughs> like, this is so easy. I'm so famous. Well, and wait, I does just... your other sister upset that she's not featured? Uh, no, no, okay. cause I kinda, like, obviously my sister isn't an evil mastermind, so it's like, kind of stories about both of them, so they both so kind of like share in the glory, yeah. That's pretty great. That's a, a great gift that you'll give them without having to pay for anything for the rest of their lives. <laughs> yeah. That's great. They can't owe you anything. Uh, a lot of people are asking about, like, what would your last meal be? <sighs> There's a lot of morbid questions, like, if you could, yeah. what would your last day be like? What would your last meal be like? Yeah, we're getting a lot of those lately. <laughs> yeah, people are just fascinated I think by my mom's food, my mom's spaghetti. Yeah, get yeah. that, get that, eight, get that yeah. eight, eight mom's course. spaghetti. <laughs> my dad's Vomit favorite. on my sweater already. <laughs> Got and it. Eminem would be there rapping. He'd be obviously. He'd be freestyling about my demise. Ugh. And then when it got cold, you could throw it at someone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd be there ready <laughs> yeah. to take it. <laughs> and with my fried. last breath, I'd chuck a noodle at Grace. <laughs> <laughs> That's how you die. Oh, yeah. yeah, that would be so. That's why no one wanted me to do it. They're like, you will die <laughs> if you throw Grace. We like you. Grace. <laughs> okay, someone wants to know, do you like Sonic? And what is your favorite Sonic game? And least favorite? I don't, I've never, Sonic was just like too cool for me, I think. Oh, I see, just, I played that with my brother because it didn't feel complicated. It was like, you just have to run, run. and get coins as yeah, fast yeah. as possible. It was just so fast. And I'm like, I'm a simple guy. I just, <laughs> I just need a mission. <laughs> yeah, and I just, I'm arrows. more Mario. Just boing, bounce, bounce, <laughs> you know, like he's going 500 miles an hour. Yeah, it's a it pinball too much. machine, basically, yeah. in, like, game form. Yeah, yeah I, like, I can't drive. This is too fast and furious for me. <laughs> yeah. Um, what was the first game that you remember playing? Was Maybe it, it was, was Mario? No. It, for me, it was, like, Duck Hunt. Maybe. Like, full Nintendo. Mm, that was fun. I remember that I game. remember I wanted video games forever, and, like, we didn't have money for that. And yeah. then these people down the street... Like, we grew up with Nintendo and Super Nintendo and stuff, but these people down the street were having a tag sale, and they had an Atari that was, Whoa. like, $10. And I kept, like, I was like, oh, I don't have $10. I'll be right back. And I was, like, <laughs> asking my dad. He said no. And I was like, I found three. Can I have it? No. And then I kept scrounging up more and more quarters and nickels and stuff. And all day long, I kept going back and being like, is this enough? Is this enough? And finally, at the end of the day, he gave it to me for, like, eight bucks. And so those what a bitch though. Yeah, and I know. kids coming back and forth this much trying to scrounge up money. Just give him the game. You're trying to get rid of it. I think after the third attempt, I'd be like, just don't come back. Just take yeah. it. <laughs> That's so funny. And so that Atari was like one of the first yeah, systems for sure. that you played on. It came in this huge suitcase that they had made out of like wood and felt. It must have weighed like 70 pounds. <laughs> I yeah. How I, unnecessary. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Jack, did you ever play Atari? Yeah, I never did. I did. I mean, I was more of a Nintendo kid, but I had a mm -hmm. friend who had an Atari. Yeah. Atari was like super old, right? Yeah. That's and like it was the first really gaming hard. system, I thought. The games yeah. were really always very hard. What were the conceit of the games? I mean, there was like, they're like really simple baseball game. There was like, um, he had Pong. He had um, one of the, I think just regular Pac-Man. Yeah, yeah. Like Centipede. Oh, right, right. Um, there's one, there's a game called Asteroids where you just oh, like yeah, blow yeah. up the... Uh, you know, they're, they're, they're like, I remember getting a bunch of them for like, like they re-released a bunch of them for iPad and I was like, oh, I'm going to play oh, yeah. these old Atari games. And then I remember like, I played them for like half an hour and I was just like, oh yeah, these, um, Don't these, hold up. these games aren't great. Like Snake <laughs> and all those. Yeah. yeah. Um, a lot of the Nintendo games do. Like playing le like the original Legend of Zelda is still fun. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I, it was. Gold, Some things just right? don't hold up. Yeah. Wasn't the Nintendo? Wasn't the cartridge gold? Yes. Yeah, because my brothers would yeah. play that, and I just remember seeing the gold one and being like, "What is that?" And yeah. then they would play, and I'd be like, "I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> this is taking a long time. How do you just stack the blocks on each other?" Um, okay, lighthearted question. 
You ever feel like life is pointless and even though you made a name for yourself, it's all meaningless in the endlessness of the universe? Wow. Yeah. So these are the kind of questions that you elicit. My fan base and I need to have a talk. This is crazy. Everyone's basically like, is he okay? That's really the question? (laughs) That is the question that we have directly tweeted. Uh, Henry Thurvon is the one that wants to know this. Um, what was the question? I just halfway through, I got sad. Yeah, I know. When the question starts with, do you ever feel like life is pointless? Uh, you know it's not going to end that optimistic. I feel like optimistic. Henry needs to call somebody. Yeah, I feel like uh, Henry... Reach out to some friends, Henry. Henry's having an existential crisis. Um, yeah. Yeah, do you ever feel like life is pointless? And even though you made a name for yourself, it's all meaningless in the endlessness of the universe. <laughs> Someone's reading some philosophers right now. Yeah, maybe talk to a priest. I don't know. Something. Uh, Sure. Yeah, sure. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I can't say that I don't. That happens to everybody, right? <laughs> At some point or another, you're like, this is stupid. It's basically like, do you ever feel sad? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, 100%. Okay. What? <laughs> Sorry. What? Oh, replace every vowel in your name with Oodle. What's your new name? Oodle. Uh, Oodle X. Wait. Yeah, exactly. That was this is a hard one. Oodle Oodle X. Oodle-oodle-ix. Oodle-oodle-ix. Cloodle-lurk. Clooder. Cloodle-lurk. Yeah. Rolls off the tongue. Very beautiful. That's like a... Requires three people to say. (laughs) Did you ever watch, and this was a show based in Boston, I think, uh, Zoom? Yeah. I know someone from that show. What? If you say Zoe, I'm going to kick over I these don't microphones. Know Zoe. Okay. <laughs> I know Pablo from Zoom that did the rap. Yeah, what? Yeah, he went to college with me. What? He Everyone li- goes to fucking Emerson. <laughs> <laughs> he lived across the hall and like for six months, people would like come in and be like, where's Pablo? Like people that didn't even go to that college. I- people would be like, I came from Oklahoma and I heard Pablo's here. Oh, oh my God. My little Tim is going to lose his goddamn fuck. Fucking brain. He and I, my younger brother and I, used to watch that show also, every day. Also mm-hmm. in Boston, he missed out. Oh, he wor- he works for PBS now, so if he goes down to PBS in Boston, um, he can meet Pablo. It was um, <laughs> a show that made me feel like I could be in entertainment. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I was like, have you ever seen this show? No, Jack? I'm not familiar. It was with it only all. on the. Uh, on like oh yeah, you live in New Jersey, right? Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, it was on all of the East Coast. It was on PBS. Yeah, it was on PBS, and it was basically the this. It was like the real world, but <laughs> that like is for the- <laughs> middle schooler, like kind of dorky outcast, maybe musical theater type kids. Okay. And they're just doing. <laughs> I can't believe you called it the real world. <laughs> because it's a bunch of people stop being polite and start getting educational. <laughs> they literally come into this like very cheap studio. It was like, I guess it was like the real world meets the magic school bus. If you uh, yes, yeah. exactly that. Exactly <laughs> that. And it's all these like real kids that get cast that like aren't you know child actor types seemingly but probably in real life are no they weren't it was all regular kids I thought that yeah Yeah. well they and they come in they basically do all these different like science experiments and they answer fan mail and it's like YouTube before YouTube existed yeah that's exactly what it was in a weird, weird way and there was like a cast of like seven or eight or nine of them and it would be like sometimes rotating when they got like too old looking yeah. for it because it was made specifically like they're all like 12 years old okay yeah. basically and then they would uh yeah they would answer like questions and like try different like science experiments they could figure these things out it was wow. fascinating and my uh younger brother had a crush on zoe mm-hmm. and then he turned out super gay so <laughs> it was uh <laughs> but it was so fun to watch because that was like i want to be on zoom has that's he never met someone have you never met someone that's been on zoom no because i think he's st- my friend is still friends with zoe oh my god so maybe we could connect my your brother's brother. birthday is next march <laughs> If I have Zoe pop out a cake of a cake for him, <laughs> I will be the we best can make sister that in the goddamn universe. Why don't, we get, why don't we get the cast on the show? We'll just invite them on Not Too Deep. I mean, it's a... Zoom I've, reunion. I mean, this, that show still exists. Resumion. I don't think Yeah, that gets to be the Andy Cohen of the Zoom reunions. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just like, who was hooking up with who after like the hurricane in the soda bottle experiment? Oh my God. Yeah, it was so nuts. But I'm so happy that someone else can... And confirm that this show actually existed. Yeah, it was real. Because we, yeah, come on and zoom, come, come on, on and, and zoom, zoom, come yeah. on. And they would say the, uh, I remember being like, 
Because they would give you the address in song of where you could send in. That was what my friend Pablo sang. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. And yeah. so the uh, who had I, didn't you have like a full on like 90s bowl cut? Yeah. I feel like they all did at some point. But I remember being like, I don't even know my own home address, but I know the Zoom address for their studios by heart. Because <laughs> of the song. Yeah. Check it out. Yes. <laughs> we can't do it on our own. We need to make it can only be on Zoom. <laughs> wow. It's great, you guys. It's, I mean, yeah, it's not the worst television you could watch as a, a child. <laughs> it holds up. It holds up. It really holds up. Oh, it's got to exist. My show was um, that camp show that was on Disney. Camp Waziata. Camp. Did you on... not watch that? No. I remember. I was, was going to say that? Salute Your Shorts. Salute that was Your the Shorts. Camp show. What? Bl- bug Juice. Yeah. Bugs. Doesn't come in a jar. Yeah. That was like a reality show about camp, right? Yeah. I remember because we were also not well off, so we couldn't afford the Disney Channel, mm-hmm. but my cousins sometimes had it. So anytime there was a family party, I'd be like, I want to watch Bug Juice. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was obsessed. I like tracked down the camp. I tried to get them to Where let me go on camp? a scholarship. <laughs> <It> was in, <laughs> yeah. I was in Maine. Was it? Yeah. And the whole, yeah, because I remember I never went to camp growing up, but I was like, this is so scandalous. It it's is. crazy at that young age that you're seeing, which probably was like the initiation to me watching Real Housewives now as an adult. <laughs> and it's like the parallel. Sure. I just never That I think was one of the first like hardcore reality shows was Bug Juice. Yeah. Hardcore reality show. The like Disney programming. Juice. Hardcore reality. <laughs> no, it was. Like it figured out a lot of the things that they use in reality with like interviewing people and uh, like yeah. talking head kind yeah. of things. Yeah. And it also was just like for kids. So there's mm. something that they're trying to retain that's pure about it because it's yeah. for Disney Channel. Right. But I remember being like, oh my God, the vi- like wanting to live through their experiences being the first time that I've seen that of like same with Zoom. That you're like, yeah. these seem like I could I could do this. I want to live through their experiences. Without them seeming like Hollywood types. But we'll have to find bug juice if it doesn't exist. That sounds like YouTube. It basically was before YouTube started. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I watched TV the other... I watched a a late night interview. mm -hmm. And I was like, this is so sad. Oh, wait, what? (laughs) It just felt so old and dead. I felt so bad. And I was like, everyone's working so hard on this, but it just feels so disconnected. Yeah. The, it's, such a, it's such an old format. Yeah. yeah. It's like multi-camera sitcoms. Yeah. It's like they've been doing the same thing since like I Love Lucy. Yeah. And they're still doing it. Feels it feels disingenuous now. Yeah. That yeah. you're just like, I would love you guys to just like break down the formalities of what's happening right now and have a real conversation yeah. that isn't pre-planned, but you're pretending right. that I have never heard this story from yeah. you before. Yeah, yeah. They all have a desk. They all have a couch. They yeah. all have a band. Like more like um, the D- David Letterman show now on Netflix. That's so, I watched his Obama interview. Yeah. And I was like, oh, he started with Obama. I can't watch any other episode. This was so good. Yeah. Because Obama gives him shit for yeah. the, like, you know, being David Letterman and coming out with like the caveman beard. And yes. All yeah. Uh, and then you're like, oh, Obama's. But it was like, so much better because they were just like talking and hanging out. And yeah. Having a real, real conversation. It felt intimate. Yeah. 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 Um, we touched on this a little bit earlier, but um, someone wants to know how many hours per day do you spend on making animation? So like how much actual time goes into a video that you create? Okay, so I have a, uh, we just started growing our awesome team. So now mm-hmm. we're up to like two and a half people, but we all work like, they work eight hours a day, Monday through Friday. I work like 10 hours a day, Monday through Friday. Jesus. And then wow. like five-ish hours on the weekend. How does a wow. half person work? Uh, they don't work all the days of the week. Oh, okay, got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's a full person, yeah, just doing a part time. How do yeah. you got go it. about assembling your team? Like, what are the things that you you look for? Lots of trial and error. Yeah. Um, I just find, please, if you're listening, don't do this. Don't lie at interviews. Yeah. It's so much better to tell the truth. Like, tell people what about, you're like, good at and what you're and, bad like, at, and mm-hmm. like, just be honest. Like. Yeah, it's just hard when I you interview people. It's really hard to like... Everyone's trying to make themselves obviously sound the most hireable yeah. of all time. But Don't then do that. You're going to get found out. Yeah. Because the proof is in the pudding. You're yeah. going to sure. have to that try to do the things you say you can do. <laughs> so I, I went from looking for skill sets to more just finding people I want to hang out with every day. That's Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's a great philosophy in terms of hiring. Yeah. Especially if there's a willingness to learn. Yeah. Is probably, I imagine, in the animation field, something that's totally necessary. Because, yeah. in terms of like tech stuff, for me, even just making 
very basic YouTube videos. I feel like there's new cameras, there's new equipment constantly. Is that yeah. the same in animation? Like, is there new stuff that you have to like keep up with constantly? Uh, not so much. No, 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 not really. So We've we, the 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 thing we run into trouble with is that we when I got into animation, I was like, well. I was very optimistic. I was like, if when this fails, what will make me the most hireable? <laughs> okay, that's fair. Wow. Yeah. And so very I very honest. Yeah. And so I found uh that the animation software the most TV shows were using was this program called Toon Boom. Toon Boom. And so adorable name. Yeah, I learned that, but no one uses that on the internet. They all use Flash because it's more user friendly. Yeah. Okay. And so the hardest thing for us is finding people that know how to use this super complicated TV scale <laughs> software. Really? Is yeah. that what like South Park uses? Yeah. South Park, um, Rick and Morty, Got it. Family Guy, cool. um, F is for Family, Bojack Horseman. They all That's use a that. lot of different styles too. Yeah. That's cool. Sounds yeah. must be really powerful. It's insane software, yeah. It's more like compositing than animation, a lot of this stuff. Right. Yeah. That makes sense for What's South Park. What's compositing? It's like taking like the pieces of cardboard that they use to make like um the South Park animation. Mm -hmm. You composite that together by putting all the little pieces together. Got it, got it, got it. Oh, yeah, because I did watch the documentary about the South Park, like how they Wasn't make it so in one good? week. Seven days to That's air. That's insane. It's fascinating. It's yeah. nuts, but also like you get a firsthand glimpse at like how passionate and how like distrustful yeah. they are of like other people with their ideas and their yeah. like stuff that they're like you in their 10, 12, 15 hours a oh, day. Oh yeah, they're cranking it out. They're doing topical episodes every week. And it's just it's them nuts. in a writer's room, but talking to each other, yeah, like yeah. mom and dad at the yeah. head of the table the whole time. I'm so jealous of people that can write stuff because I, I just can't do it. What like, do you mean you can't do it? Um, so when I, when I make my videos, like I have some ideas written down, but then mm -hmm. I like kind of improvise and edit it as I go. And mm -hmm. sometimes I'll get like halfway through the video and then realize, oh, I have to change the beginning to have the ending make sense. It's very oh. much like, interesting. and I like adding the sound effects and the music and everything like all but at that once. that is writing. What no, you're like, describing is writing. I can, but I can't like, I've tried working with writers before. Uh -huh. I can't use their scripts. Right. Um, right. if I do, I have to heavily modify them. Sure. Um, oh, so you're like having the preemptive idea that you don't have to trial and error the whole yeah. time or like cause and effect as yeah. you're creating, just thus creating more work for yourself yeah. over if, and over again. Exactly. Or if I write something, I end up changing it when I'm recording. Sure. So I can't work with writers. I have a hard time working with editors or, um, people like, I couldn't just record all my lines, hand it off to someone and have them make it. Really? Right. Yeah. Interesting. You sound very hireable right now <laughs> in the way you've just he described sounds it. sounds <laughs> difficult to work with. <laughs> I can't work with writers. I can't work with editors. Um, I just won't but do I would it. love I to have it. some employees. Um, so please come work for Working me. Working on other projects, like just for like my creative process of me creating something alone, like it's mm -hmm. just, it's so hard for me to just stick to the script. Yeah, no, I get that. And that probably feels more authentic in the final outcome. Yeah. That it was just like something that felt natural. Yeah. If you had, uh, and we're towards the end of the podcast, and I, we couldn't do a part two at some point in the future um, where you can bring the spaghetti and we can figure it all out. <laughs> but um, if you had, because you put so many hours into a video, like what's the best, most positive response that you could get from someone like in the comments or in person about something that you've created? Like what's something that catches you off guard that you're like, that's exactly how I wanted someone to interpret this. That is such a great question because no one ever asks that at all. <laughs> well, it's always like, what's the worst comment you've ever yeah, gotten? Yeah. And like, we all get shitty comments constantly, but it's always fascinating to me. Cause for me, it's always like, this was really funny. Anything that made someone yeah. genuinely laugh or like was caught off guard in laughter is something that I value as I like, would say when I load up the comment section mm -hmm. uh, in my mind I'm like someone's gonna say this is funny yeah yeah and that's the hope right yeah that's that's why I log into the comments to try and find <laughs> <one>. <laughs> to get that validation yeah, yeah, yeah. that this wasn't all for naught yeah yeah uh, well we're on the same page with that um, we're gonna give you for making time out of your insane work schedule uh, every guest that comes on the podcast uh, gets a personalized fortune cookie. No way. Do I get to open this right now? If yeah. you want to. Uh, yeah, it's... Um, should I share it with the people? It's stale. That's okay. <laughs> oh, you can share... Yeah, the fortune? Absolutely. <laughs> you will be playing Fortnite and come in second. <laughs> on the other side of town, Grace had come first. Suck it, noob. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yeah, <laughs> that sorry. is the comment I've been looking for. Sometimes, yeah, that's the validation you've been yeah, looking yeah. for. Uh, <laughs> Alex, this was super fun. Thank you for making time again. Where can people find any of your work online or any? I know oh, you're doing. Oh, I forgot to say, I'm going. I'm starting like a shows? tour. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm super pumped. I'm not, we didn't do like a tour schedule mm -hmm. of like 20 dates. I want to just do one and see how it goes. Okay. So that's in Fargo, North Dakota on July 21st. What an interesting spot to do it in. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, and then uh, they don't get enough YouTube love. So I was like, why not go there? Yeah, no, that's great. They actually have, oh, we can't keep talking, but they have, they have a huge comedy scene. It's insane. Do they really? Yeah. So because I used to juggle and stuff, I would perform at like fairs near there. Oh. Oh. And I would always go to their open mics and they have like 40 or 50 comedians all working on material. I had wow. no idea. Yeah, it's crazy. Wait, so July 21st? July 21st. Cool. And then based on, I think the next one will probably be in the Denver area and then we're going to go from there. That's awesome. Very yeah. cool. And Where then can people find information about your tour? It's alexclark.com. Awesome. And then just it's Alex Clark across all social media? Yeah. Now, ITS Alex Clark. Yeah, I know. Does it bum you out that you can't have a parenthesis yeah. or a, a comma? Because is yours still It's Grace? Um, no, mine is, you can just look Grace. Because it was up. It's Grace, right? It was It's Grace because someone else had the Grace Helbig and then I eventually got that back. But yeah, it I was always weird to be it. like, It's Grace. And I know, I want to change it, but it's too late. You can ask Papa YouTube to change it for you. Yeah. You think I should just change it to Alex Clark? I mean, it's your branding. You know Although what you're at this doing. point, I should probably change it to Grandpa Alex. <laughs> no, no, Juggalicious. Please, dear God. I agree. Uh, go check out all of his wonderful content. And if you are in Fargo, North Dakota. July 21st. July 21st. Um, go check him out. Uh, Alex Clark. Thank you. <gasps> Thanks, Grace. Thanks, everybody. You're welcome. We'll see you Shaq, I want to be in the sequel. <laughs> oh, when he gets on the podcast eventually. Shaq Fu 2. Uh, <laughs> That'll be so good. <laughs> we'll see you guys next time on Not Too Deep. Goodbye. Too deep. Too deep. Too deep. Not too deep. With Grace Helbig. Third Love is passionate about the perfect fit, and they believe it's time for your bra to fit you, not the other way around. Their collections are designed by women for women, so you will love the way you feel under each and every look. And now they offer over 70 sizes and more than a dozen styles, so you'll find the perfect bra for every moment and every outfit. Get 15% off your first purchase by going to thirdlove.com grace today. Not Too Deep is a production of Grace Helbig Incorporated. Produced and directed by Jack Ferry. Producer Melissa D. Mons. With writing by Diane Kang. Audio support by Chris Henry. Editing by Melissa D. Mons. And an extra special thank you to Flula for the theme music. 